Hello everyone. In today's video, we will be discussing about the water soluble vitamins B9 and B12. So first to discuss with B9. So why I have mentioned B9 and B12. So far in our videos, we have discussed about all vitamin B complex vitamins like uh, energy releasing vitamins, uh, vitamins which are helpful in protein metabolism. So now the term for B9 and B12. So these two why I am stressing because these are the vitamins which required for erythropoiesis that means hemopoietic vitamins without these two uh, vitamins there is no erythropoiesis or rbc synthesis so to begin with b9 folic acid so folic acid is nothing but in greek folium so everywhere any green leaf vegetable you take there is a presence of b9 so as a pregnant woman i mean like uh, doctors used to prescribe physicians for pregnant ladies or pregnant women, they say like to consume more green leafy vegetables because not only iron but also B9 will be there in the green leafy vegetables which is useful for synthesis of new cells in the fetus for making a healthy baby. So coming to the chemistry part, folic acid is consists of three parts. One is pteridine ring, okay, this is pteridine ring, okay, and PABA, para amino benzoic acid. This is at para position, there is amino group, so that's why it is known as para amino benzoic acid. And third part is amino acid glutamate, glutamic acid. So these three parts make a B9 or folic acid. Coming to sources, as I mentioned in the beginning, green leafy vegetables, pulses, eggs, liver are the rich sources of B9, and RDA. Daily requirement that means recommended daily allowance or regular daily allowance is like 200 micrograms per day and this intake will increase in case of pregnancy and lactation. So absorption and transport polyglutamate from, uh, form converted to monoglutamate form because simple substances only will allowed to absorb in the intestine. So polyglutamate cannot be absorbed so it will be converted to monoglutamate form after cellular uptake this monoglutamate form like converted to tetrahydrofolate okay so active form as it is a b complex vitamin all b complex vitamins carrying their coenzyme form or active form folic acid also have its active form that is tetrahydrofolate okay so i'll tell you what is a tetrahydrofolate and how it will be formed so here you see tetrahydrofolate on the folate part like pteridine ring it has got valency to carry hydrogens or accept hydrogens so if it is having four hydrogens that is known as tetrahydro tetrahydro literally means four hydrogens okay so directly tetrahydrofolate will not form first it will form folate to dihydrofolate that means two hydrogens been added and further two more hydrogens been added and forms tetrahydrofolate okay this way tetrahydrofolate has been synthesized and it will be known as active form of folic acid. So you see here the enzyme which is responsible for making DHF and THF dihydrofolate. So to the folic acid the donor of hydrogens is NADPH. NADPH will be donating its hydrogen to folic acid to form dihydrofolate. Two hydrogens has been added here. Okay and another uh, dihydrofolate reductase here also the donor of hydrogens is NADPH which is forming NADP by donating two hydrogens okay two more hydrogens and in making tetrahydrofolate so here the main enzyme responsible is dihydrofolate reductase folic acid to dihydrofolate by donating two hydrogens the donor of hydrogens here is NADPH and again the DHF converted to tetrahydrofolate by accepting two more hydrogens from the same source NADPH to form NADP and with the enzyme dihydrofolate reductase. So the, what is the main function of folic acid? The main function of folic acid that is one carbon metabolism that means donor of one carbon substances. So in our body there is a one carbon pool. So wherever, wherever the degradation of carbons okay that means carbon skeleton. So all these carbons will be dumped into a pool that is known as one carbon pool for the transfer of these one carbon substances tetrahydrofolate will be useful so when tetrahydrofolate is required for cell division there is incorporation of this one carbon substances and also decrease plasma homocysteine 
Nowadays, researchers has been uh, explained the reason behind atherosclerosis uh, for uh, myocardial infractions is that homocysteine levels. Homocysteine undergo oxidation and form foam cells. It is also like uh, the oxidation of cholesterol to blocking the arteries and causing angina pectoris or myocardial infractions. So, what it will do? The conversion of homocysteine to methionine. Okay, the conversion of sorry, homocysteine to cysteine. So, you require B9. Without B9, homocysteine cannot be converted to cysteine. So, when B9 is not there, as there is no conversion of homocysteine to cysteine, this homocysteine level increase and it will form problems to the heart. So, one carbon compounds, methyl groups, methylene groups, aldehyde groups, carbon dioxide and acyl groups, all these comes under one carbon metabolism. So, the main substances which involved in one carbon metabolism, they are serine, glycine, histrine, formaldehyde, formate. So, THF when accepting the formyl group, it is known as n formyl at nth carbon, nth carbon, THF accepts the formyl group. So, then it is known as n formyl tetrahydrofolate. Okay. So, it forms tetrafolate accepting formyl group, it forms n formyl or else if it is accepting methyl group, it is known as methyl tetrahydrofolate at nth atom if it is accepting the methyl group it is known as n methyl tetrahydrofolate so they are all acting as donor of formal or methyl groups so the thing is it is in making dtmp you know what deoxyribonucleic acid thymine is used that to deoxyribonucleic acid so deoxy form and that to uracil is not there thymine is there for conversion of the uracil to thymine you require tetrahydrofolate and it forms DTMP which involves making of DNA, serine, purines, B12 and methyl group donor it will be acting. So one carbon you can make out here formate like source is a formate and N10 formal tetrahydrofolate it is acting as a purine precursor in making of purine ring okay adenine or guanine and serine glycine form of formaldehyde. So after receiving this uh, methyl groups, it converted to methylene tetrahydrofolate in making DUMP and glycine. So finally, in conversion of DUMP to DTMP and serine. So this way you can synthesize serine from glycine and N5 N10 methylene tetrahydrofolate forms N5 methyl tetrahydrofolate in vitamin B12 synthesis. So for vitamin B12 formation, you require vitamin B9. If vitamin B9 is not there, vitamin B12 cannot be synthesized in our body. So methyl covalent formation, you require B9. Histidine, it forms N5 methyl tetrahydrofolate and converted to N5 N10 methylene tetrahydrofolate. So, if in case this N5 N10 methyl tetrahydrofolate is not there, histidine can, cannot be converted to uh, the degraded form of histidine and that form is form immunoglutamate and this will be excreted in the urine, figlu. And choline, the receiver or like form of one carbon donor is betaine and homocysteine in formation of methionine and dimethylglycine. Methionine, acetinosyl methionine is a donor of methyl group which in making of uh, like receptor is glycine and making N-methylglycine. So the major source of carbon is serine and the carbon unit attached to tetrahydrofolate can be oxidized and reduced at the methyl level. And reoxidation that doesn't occur. So only transfer of hydrogen groups but uh, reoxidation there is no question about it. You see here conversion DNA, DUMP can be converted to uh, DTMP and making DNA and folic acid, DHF, n methyl tetrahydrofolate. So to explain this, so you can make out here the uses of uh, folic acid. So folic acid converted to dihydrofolate, dihydrofolate to tetrahydrofolate and accepting form immune formal groups, tetrahydrofolate converted to N5 formal tetrahydrofolate. So histidine can be converted to glutamate. So as it is not there in histidine metabolism, this figlu will be excreted in urine. So, figlu test will be performed in case histidine is not excreting, I mean like not metabolizing properly, right. And this making like N5 methyl tetrahydrofolate also making uh, tetrahydrofolate by donating methyl group. So, here homocysteine is the acceptor of methyl group and converting to uh, methionine and here the supporter of this reaction is again B12. So, like this in making of serine from glycine, it is irreversible. So, these are all the functions of folic acid. So without folic acid, all these like histidine metabolism also disturbed and uh, there is no synthesis of DTMP. So DNA synthesis is also impaired and in case of uh, synthesis of methionine, this is also impaired. So coming to deficiency. So deficiency is like megaloblastic anemia, neural tube defects in fetus, hyper uh, homocysteinemia, accumulation excretion.
excretion of fig glue so as histidine not converting into glutamate so fig glue will be accumulated and excreted in the urine leads a condition fig glue okay that is a test actually fig glue test so you can make out in the picture here normal bone marrow okay and in megaloblastic so the bone marrows are bulged and nothing will be inside okay and they are improperly synthesized so the lysis of rbc will be quicker compared to their lifespan 120 days so neural tube defects spina bifida this is a condition it is known as spina bifida where neural tube like spinal cord is not synthesized it is came out of the body okay so the baby will not survive for more than two or four months the baby will die and coming to one of the important this one folate trap okay folate trap in the sense though there is availability of folate in the body it will not be used because it is trapped at one place okay that's why it is popularly known as folate trap you have plenty of folate but it has been trapped at one place of the body so where it has been trapped so we'll explain that trapping by this theory so here for synthesis of homo uh, for synthesis of methionine you require homocysteine okay for this homocysteine what is the required some methyl group donor has to be there so here methyl cobalamin so methylated cobalamin b12 is acting as a donor of that methyl group so homocysteine in making of methionine you require methyl cobalamin so methyl group has been donated by b12 to homocysteine to make methionine and the plain uh, b12 that means cobalamin will be out so this cobalamin has to be methylated again and what is the source of uh, regeneration of this methyl cobalamin it is uh, n methyl n5 methyl tetrahydrofolate and this n5 methyl tetrahydrofolate converts b12 into methyl cobalamin and it converted to tetrahydrofolate okay and this is the normal cycle okay so but in case what happens if there is no b12 available in case of b12 deficiency what happen this tetrahydrofolate is not available and most of the tetrahydrofolate will be trapped as n5 methyl tetrahydrofolate because if there is no b12 available to whom it can donate its methyl group right so in that condition b12 cannot be methylated though there is a methyl i mean like because there is absence of b12 so whom it will be donating this methyl group so most of the tetrahydrofolate trapped as n5 methyl tetrahydrofolate and this is known as folate trap okay so this way synthesis of methionine in utilization of b12 that means methyl cobalamin and also regeneration of b12 as methyl cobalamin with the help of tetrahydrofolate is all interlinked so the it is a one of the pathway in converting n5 methyl tetrahydrofolate into tetrahydrofolate because tetrahydrofolate has got other functions so there for those functions we require free tetrahydrofolate not a methyl tetrahydrofolate so methyl tetrahydrofolate is not useful for many functions so it is only have one function that is regeneration of methyl cobalamin but as b12 is not available who it will donate methyl group so that is the basis behind folate trap so there are antagonists for this folic acid like sulfonamides methotrexate pyrimethamine so these are all anti cancer drugs okay in treatment of cancers cancer is nothing but a uncontrolled cell growth for cell growth you oh, sorry for cell synthesis for cell synthesis you require nucleus that is dna the dna is made up of purines and pyrimidines so these purines making you require folic acid so when you obstruct the availability of folic acid there is no synthesis of purines and there is no dna if there is no dna there is no cell synthesis okay so these are the drugs which makes folic acid unavailable for the cell new cell synthesis so this way you can stop the cancerous uh, cell progress okay so this is the logic behind of this so microorganisms and humans share most of the common dna structure so that's all about uh, b9 thanks for listening thank you